Great. Hi, everyone. We're giving um, just another minute or so to let people in. We're letting people in from the waiting room still right now, but we're super excited to see you all tonight, especially right after um, all fa our family reunion just ended. I know I just flew in from Florida, so I don't know if any of you all did too, but we're excited to keep it going, keep all of the learning going and, and keep building up our skills. This is exciting. And boy, are her arms tired. <laughs> yeah, flew all the way up here, <laughs> laughing the whole way. <laughs> All right. Okay, so while we're um, admitting people in still, I'm gonna give you all a quick update. Um, just so you know, my name is Melissa Stoker. I am the one that you've been getting emails from, the one who's kind of getting stuff on YouTube for you all. And if you have questions about any logistics and things like that, I'm your contact. So feel free to reach out to me. Um, and I also just wanted to let you all know that I will be putting the materials in the chat, just like you've been seeing for all the other nights of Ignite so far. And also I, we are behind one um, video on YouTube. I know that you guys were waiting for the Thursday one, but like I said, I was at family reunions. So I haven't got it just yet, but we will have it this week as well as the other videos from this week too. So if you missed one or you just wanna see that again, you will have access to that. Also, we wanted to point out, you might've heard this update already, but I just wanna reiterate it because it might get a little confusing. Um, the week of March 7th, so not this week, but I believe next week, um, the Tuesday class is moving to Monday. So that'll be financial basics. It's happening on March 7th rather than Tuesday. So just a heads up, um, I can put that in the emails that I'm sending you all to so you have it, but I just wanna make sure everybody knows that so they don't miss that class. Cause I mean, financial basics is definitely an important one that you don't wanna miss. Uh, other than that, I hope you all have a fantastic class. I know we still have some people coming in, which is super exciting but I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Matt. You are in great hands tonight. I'm sure you will learn a lot. And like I said, this is recorded, so we'll take care of it from there. Thank you. Welcome everybody. I have a standing rule, turn your cameras on. The only way to engage and learn is to be present. So turn your cameras on, say hello. Ainsley, I know where you are, so you better hurry up. Okay. Ivan, what's up, buddy? How you feeling today? Good, dude. Ty, I see you, Miss Ainsley. Miss Dina. I had a long, long, long day, so. <laughs> well, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it somewhat of a long night. However, we're gonna have some fun with, and only the occasional alarm interruption back there. Um, then we might have to worry about that. Other than that, we should be good to go. So. How's everybody feeling tonight? Tell me something good. I'm a very engaged person. If you don't talk to me, I talk endlessly about nothing. Or I put dogs on the screen. So I like engagement. I'm a very engaging person. The more we talk, the better it is. Apparently it's National Margarita Day. That seems like a good thing. If I was drinking a margarita, it would be better, but this is coffee. However, I'm going to salute that, Ainsley. Thank you very much. That's probably the best thing. Can anybody beat that? No, Only hearing none. We we're actually drinking one. Thank you, Emily. I see you down here. Um, all right. So I just got out of an, uh, uh, an escape room. And uh, I'm a little wired. So who's ready to have some fun and learn at the same time? I'm going to do my best. Let's put it like that. So, so real quick, I would like to have the question of who is currently working with some clients? Who's got clients they're working with? More importantly, I will stay focused to the subject matter. More importantly, who has um, buyers they're working with right now or potential buyers they're working with right now? Me. Who said me? I didn't. Well, tell me about it, Ivan. What's going on with it? Brand new? You got a buyer agreement signed? What's going on with them? Um, just waiting for the pre-approval. Okay. From her side. All right. That's important. Why is the pre-approval important? Um, it makes it lets us know how much money she really can count on. What's the budget looking like? All right. Their buying power. Right. And that's one of the important things when we're dealing with buyers is their buying power. What kind of buying power do they what kind of body, buying power do they have? And do they even have enough buying power to do anything? Um, kind of 
out there a little bit for you, but I will ask this question because it is important when you're dealing with buyers and that pre-approval. Um, as agents, what are some of the questions we would ask buyers about their finances? Like how far do you think you would go asking about finances? It's open to anybody, not just to Ivan, since he's the only one with a buyer, but open to anybody. Are you pre-approved? That's all I'm going to ask. <laughs> That's all you're going to ask? <laughs> for, for starters. <laughs> okay. All right. I like that. So I know you because guys are finance right. is not my profession. I'm a, I'm a realtor. <laughs> Do they have an existing house to sell? Oh, I like that one, Lori. That's very good. All right. I, mean, I, I just went with the basics. Uh, you know, what an idea of maybe like the credit score. Um, yeah. We can add probably, how much. Probably if they saved any money for down payment yet. Now we're starting to dig down into those financials right there. Thank you, Sharon. So we got to worry about some financials uh, as far as do they have money for down payment? Um, what are some of the upfront costs, like out-of-pocket costs your buyer is going to um, have in a transaction? And if you don't know any of this, don't worry about it. Home inspection. Home inspection. Okay, home inspection. What else? Sometimes the appraisal. Appraisal. Okay. Earns my deposit. That's the key one right there. Everyone forgets about that one. Oh, by the way, I need 1% of the sales price for your earnest money deposit, by the way. Do you have that also? Right. Um, I will tell you this right now, telling your folks when you meet with them up front about all expenses is key because you don't want to get into a situation where you are going through the motions and you're getting through this deal. And all of a sudden the lender comes up and says, so the, they don't have enough cash in their accounts or they don't have enough cash for this or that. And it's like two, three weeks in and you're going, we're supposed to settle soon. So like, what are we going to do? Right. Um, I have plenty of agents that I coach that I, uh, I get that phone call on occasion and I'm like, what were you thinking? Donna, what you got? I was going to say, where's, where is your cash? Where is the money that you're going to use? Because I had a, a young couple that had had a wedding, got all kinds of money and the money was in their father's safe. It was cash. So we had to talk to the lender to see how we could track the cash and how we could could utilize that. The other thing is gift money. Where is it coming from? And to talk to the lender as to what they're going to require as to tracking that money. You can't just show up with a gift letter and a check. You can't just come in with cash or take the cash, deposit it, and then come up with a check. The lender wants to know where did it come from? Very well said. And that is very important when you're dealing with this because that's going to be a problem. So someone's going to get their shop collar put on. Um, that is very well said. And I appreciate that because knowing where all that stuff comes from is key. And the lender has to track all of that money, right? Hey, Matt, Matt, how do you handle the situation when you have a, a buyer and she says to you, well, I'm going to get the royal usda loan and i don't have to put any money down that's what my mortgage person said okay who's going to pay her closing costs oh just they what they tell them to do is um up it like say the house is going for 150 they tell them to up it to 160 and ask the seller to pay the closing costs or half the closing costs that's how they're promoting their product and in negotiations, when you're trying to get a house to sell, that's probably one of the things you're going to end up doing, um, especially if somebody doesn't have any cash to close. Um, we're currently in a seller's market, so sellers are not as likely to give um, any closing help. There's no reason to. There's no need to. Yeah. So having that happen, is not, it's not, it does happen. Um, I know a few agents that they actually are able to, they, recently they've been able to get that to happen. Um, it depends on every transaction. However, raising the sales price, as long as they qualify for it, for the loan amount, which is raising the sales price, yeah. Yeah. just to get that money back is what makes the seller happy as well. So that's a completely logical and um, right way to do it, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I think it's difficult in this market because she was going up against four other buyers and she didn't win. So. so that's a key factor. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we move through the night. But Donna, what you got? I was going to say, I just had that. I had a listing and we got two offers in and one was over the, over the list substantially. 
and um, they wanted closing help. We had another one that was list price that didn't ask for any closing help. And my seller was pretty savvy and said, is it going to appraise for the, for the over the list? And I said, well, that's questionable. We really don't know. I don't have any comps to support that price. So maybe, maybe not. And my seller ended up taking the one that came in at list and didn't ask for any closing help. So sometimes just offering over list doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work. That's true. 100% accurate. And there's ways around that. And if this were negotiating the deal, I'd be more than happy to go over how you would negotiate that around. But since we're actually just talking about winning and working with buyers, we're not going to go down that path. And because I'm very easily taken down a rabbit hole that does not give any of you permission to take me down rabbit holes. We're to stay on track tonight. Okay. Okay. First one that takes me down a rabbit hole owes me a coffee. That's all there is to it. So, all right, successful agents every day. What do we do? This I, I, I focus on this sometimes because I like to have this conversation, especially with newer agents. So what does growing the business and running the business mean to you guys? Just one or two people, they'll comment. I know some of you people I actually coach and probably should know this answer. I won't say their names out loud. Emily. Um, What's it mean? Somebody give me one person, anyone who's got their say. There's no wrong answer unless I tell you it's wrong. Lead gen. Oh. I mean, I guess lead gen every day. Okay. What's the difference between growing the business and running the business though? That's the key factor. I guess run so growing the business is more that more in the sense that you are um you know, actually trying to expand, you know, as things go on yeah. and running the business is just dealing with everyday tasks that you have to, to sustain the business as it grows. Well, is that, is that roughly what you were going to say? Cause I know you were going to say something also. Um, pretty much. Yes, sir. Okay. Close enough. Right. All right. So what we've got is growing the business, doing everything we can do to make, to bring more business in and have more activity happen so that we can close more transaction. And yes, running the business is our day-to-day -day operations. Yes, lead gen and stuff like that is part of that. Yet we need to actually focus on running the business. Um, and part of the reason why I do this, and I'm not gonna be able to see every single person on this screen because I'm up to 33 people. Um, who here is a dual career agent? Who else? Who's currently working another job and launching their business in real estate? Right? I am. Some of you are supposed to be stopping that. So, all right. Here's the reason why I, I bring this up is because make sure when you get into this business, there is nobody here that is ever going to tell you to show up someplace at a certain time. We call this the employee employer mentality. So most of us, myself included, when I worked, I had a job, right? I knew when to show up. I knew what I was doing in that time frame, And then I knew what time I was going home if I ever got out of there. So owning your business and running your business is you holding your own nine to five accountability, all right? So keep that in mind when you're out there working. Nobody's going to tell you when to show up. I mean, except for like a class, we're telling you to be here today, right? So yet when you run your business, you have to run it yourself, all right? All right, finding buyers. This is a cool little thing here. Um, keep in mind, this is from 2019. I would love to see this get updated and see what it was like for 2020 and 2021 during the pandemic. Um, and see how these numbers may have shifted in some way. So 89% of buyers purchased their home through a real estate agent. 89%. Is that good or bad? Good. Yeah. Why is it good? good. That means they're using us. <laughs> <laughs> Simply that, right? It'd be nice if 100% did it, right? Mm -hmm. 41% um, of our buyers found their agent through a referral from friends and family. So I'll get on my, um, my database soapbox and my market center tech trainer soapbox about your database. Communicating to your database is key, right? Do you guys, when do you guys have database coming up? You guys haven't done a database class yet, have you? Okay. 
um, I can't remember where it's at. Um, contacting your database. Anybody know, anybody that's been engaged in the market center or has a coach or has a mentor um, or has met with me, how many times are we supposed to touch our database, actually have contact with our database every single year? Does anybody know? 36 times. 36. I like this. Yeah, we got the overachievers in the class. Thank you very much. I like that. So yes, we have a 36 touch principle. Can you do it more? Yeah, so see some head bobs. Should you do it? Can you do it less than that? You shouldn't. I like that answer. Can you? Yes. Should you? Most likely not. Now, that depends on your database, okay? So the more that you're engaged with your database, there are probably people in your database you won't touch that many times. The bulk of your database, you should be touching 36 times because that's where those referrals come from. All right. 75% um, of buyers interviewed only one real estate agent during their home search. How many people believe that? Okay. Has anybody hosted an open house since they've become an agent or in their time? Has anybody picked up a potential client from that open house? I, I hosted an open house for another uh, agent, um, but I did not pick up a buyer from it. Okay. When you are hosting an open house, I want you to take note, right? Take note of, oops, come on now. Take note of what this says right here. 75% of buyers interviewed only one real estate agent. What do you think interviewed means? Spoke to. They actually sat down. Mm. Although, you know what? Congratulations on passing your test this, your exam this past Saturday. That's excellent. Good. Just checking the chat out real quick. I got to keep an eye on it every now and then. Um, interviewed. So actually sitting down and actually having that buyer consultation, right? Do you think if you're hosting an open house that every person that comes through there is or could be interviewing you at that moment? At that moment? Yes, absolutely. Yes. I like that answer. Yes, absolutely. Right? So even though they say 75% only interviewed one agent, how many of those people actually went to open houses and they were like, well, I didn't connect with you or you came off wrong or whatever the case may be? So keep in mind when you're hosting those open houses, you need to make sure that you're treating it as you're being interviewed because those people are coming through there. They're interviewing you. They're going to be finding stuff out about you and they're going to be talking to you and you should be talking to them. And here we go. 51% of buyers visit an open house as a way to search for homes. I would put in here slash realtor because that's how they're interviewing those people as well. They're looking and talking to us every day on that. I love this chart. Has anybody ever seen this before? Yes. Does anybody know what it means? The funnel. It is a funnel. A sales funnel. A what funnel? Sales funnel. A sales funnel. Leads funnel. Contacts. Which one? Pick, your one. Pick whatever one you want. <laughs> it all, as long as it gets to the bottom. <laughs> exactly. I'll the above. <laughs> exactly. So every time we're working with somebody, we have numbers out there and I will attempt to do my best to uh, give them to you accurately because I, I have to draw from memory, which isn't that great that anymore. Um, however, for every hundred people you talk to, roughly, oh, say 40 of them will turn into actual leads, people you will actually talk to. And then out of those 40, you may end up with 20 that will actually in turn into um, potential clients, either active or almost active. Like they're like ready to sign with you or they signed with you. Um, yet out of that 100 people, you're probably only going to close two to three transactions. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are rough numbers, but you have to understand the more work you put into it, the more people you talk to, the, it's you're throwing a, a big net, if you will, right? And then only so much are actually going to stick around and actually see it through. Do you know what the numbers are for your own database? Can 
Nobody. Mm -hmm. So the more you talk to your database, so the more you do your best to convert your database, you should be able to convert. You should be able to convert anywhere from two, I think it's two to four, two to four transactions um, per 50 people, roughly, actually close. Um, yet you should be able to get more than that if you're, if you're handling your database correctly in the big picture. Um, our funnel here is prospect and marketing, as you can see. We bring our leads and our contacts. What's the difference between a lead and a contact? Anybody know? Contacts, just a person you have like contact information for and a lead's like somebody that's actively searching or trying to do something with their selling, buying, renting, whatever. Well said, thank you. Everybody got to understand that? It's more or less a contact, it's just somebody we spoke to. The lead is actually somebody that's stronger. We're actually worrying about what's going on with that, all right? Um, cultivating those people. What's one way that we can cultivate those people? What does that even mean to you guys, cultivating? I mean, we could be growing crops someplace and cultivating the soil. Educating them about the market. Okay, what else? Just the market? Is that all they need to know about? Creating a lasting relationship with them. Okay. I like that one a lot. Martin's showing up late. Wait till he gets in here and I yell at him. Um, relationship. We are in a relationship business. What else should we should be educating? I like that education thing. What are some other things we should be educating our people about? We jump back in the chat here and see what we got. Finance. Finance. Okay. What else? Market trends. Okay. Our services, the things we can do to help them. I like that one, Dina. Thank you. So what can we do to help them? How do we help them? See how you just opened up a whole nother can of worms? <laughs> what do we do? What kind of service do you provide? Well, if it's a buyer, you can put them in touch with the lender to find out exactly where they're at. That's just a marker. Tio in here saying negotiate on their behalf. So our negotiation skills, what else? You should try to be their number one point of contact for everything regarding their home. So their current home price, any... Um, any contractors that they might need, you should put them in contact with who your most trusted contractor is. Mm, I don't know about that. I heard, I don't know about that. Why do we say, I don't know about that? Well, we all, I, I always give three contractors in any given field because what if someone does a bad job? that's gonna reflect right back on you. So I, I say, here are three contractors, interview them, see which one you wanna work with, which one you think will work best for you and let them make the decision. I never give them just one and say, use it. It's, it's kind of like when you, lit, when you do a market analysis, you don't tell them the price, you give them a range, you give them options, but always let them make the decision. Very well said. And I'm pretty sure that's kind of what she meant when she said, give them your, your trusted allied resources. I'm not sure she singularly meant one, one person. So, but yes, we want to, and you should be giving more than one person anyways. So since you guys brought that up as servicing um, and you're going to give advice to people, how well do you guys know your contracts for your buyer agreements and the actual contract of sale? Has anybody practiced one? Uh, the buyers, what did you say? The buyer's contract? The buyer agreement and then your contract to sale and all the addenda that go with it. How well do you know those? The buyer's agreement, I kind of, you know, practice a lot. And I've actually, you know, done one. Okay. So that one I'm more familiar with than any of the others. Okay. I can read it upside down. You can <laughs> read it upside down? As I'm presenting it, yeah. Okay. Well... Since you're the contract master here, Donna, if you're giving referrals to your clients, then there's a particular addenda that you must also provide. 
Any idea what that is or know that if there is one? Yeah, it's it's um, it was developed by the state of Maryland and um, you are required to look up their license and make sure that they're they're in good standing with SDAT before you put them on your list to refer them. That is correct. Charity, I see you say not at all. Are you not at all familiar because you're still super, super like you just passed your test or you just haven't got time to look at the contracts yet out of curiosity? Yes, that's super, super new. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna let you all know on a little secret right now. We can go over buyers um, and we're going to, we're gonna continue to go over this and I'm gonna let you guys know you need to, and this fits right into this kind of aspect here, um, add yourself or add a fake person to your, your account um, and use it as a practice person for everything you do, even here with the smart plans. So even here, it says, add yourself to a smart plan. The reason we're doing that is because we want to see what it looks like. We, as the people need to know what that looks, the agents, I'm sorry, we, as the agents need to know what that looks like, because I want to make sure the flow is good. I want to make sure it feels good. Um, use a family member, right? Call your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your cousins, your aunts, your uncles, whoever, and say, hey, I'm going to put you on this plan over the next, you know, year, right? And I just do me a favor and open it every time you get one of my emails and just tell me how you feel about it. And because I want that feedback and I need that feedback from somebody that I trust. Okay. Also, you need to go in and actually buy and sell houses. Now, when I say buy and sell houses, now number one question people ask me all the time, well, if I go in there and I write a contract, aren't I like buying that house? No, because you're not sending the contract anyplace. All you're going to do is go in, open up your opportunities, create an opportunity, go into DocuSign, do all the documents, and then find a mentor, a coach, or somebody that you can go to and ask them, could you review this for me? Because that way, you can find out what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, and what you need to work on. Because I'll tell you right now, the last thing you want to do is be that agent who hasn't looked over the contract, hasn't looked over a buyer agreement, hasn't looked over a listing agreement, hasn't looked over any of the addenda re re related to any of it, and then all of a sudden have somebody go, I want you to write an offer on that house at eight o'clock on a Monday. Or better yet, how about eight o'clock on a Saturday, and you have no idea who to call to help you out with that. It's a lot of pressure. You're either going to make it or you're not at that point. So me personally, as you have heard in the background, Tucker James and Dakota May are in my database. Currently, I believe they are buying and selling, I don't know, eight houses in my database because I use them as training. Um, so do that. I also use them in here. Um, I'm going to give you guys a little added on here because it's not going to be in this. Smart plans are amazing. You'll never hear me say they're not. If I ever said that, then they would take away my Market Center Tech Trainer of the Year Award, and that would not be any fun. Smart plans are the way to go, all right? Who knows what a smart plan is? I see one hand, two hands. My hand's three. Can't see, can't see everybody, so. All right, um, before I go into it, who here, let me open this up real quick. I'm going to do something a little bit different for you guys. Um, I'm going to stop this share real quick so I can see as many people as possible. Before I go into this one little aspect, who here is on a team? Don't raise your hand. I know you. Who here is on a team? Anybody join a team at all? I am on a team. What's that? I'm sorry, Brandy. You're on a team? I'm on a team. Okay. All right. I'm on a team. All right. Is any of your team, are any of the teams using something other than command that you know of? You may not know yet because you're still new to the team and stuff. No, not that I know of. Okay. Excellent. If yes. you are, I know Dana, uh, Dina, I know. Um, I know. <laughs> I know everything he does. Um, if you are on a team and your team is using something other than the KW technology, you're going to use what the team does. There's nothing wrong with they, what they use. We've used it for years. Agents have used all of those different platforms for a long time, okay? What I would tell you to do as somebody on the team 
is make sure you yourself are using your command platform. And the reason why I tell you to do that is because no matter what, if you're on a team, you still need to produce and bring leads in. You can still do your own marketing on your own outside of the team as long as you are still branding yourself to the team. You team people understand that. You're still going to brand yourself to the team. You're still going to use your team logo and all that other stuff. And I would still encourage you to use the KW platforms of stuff. Okay. Here's one of the reasons why. And I can't do it. I might be able to do it. It might take me too long to do it. I should have thought about this ahead of time. So how many people have downloaded? Let me see if I can make this happen. The KW Consumer app and the KW Command mobile app. I don't see a lot of hands out there. I don't hear a lot of people shooting and hooting and hollering, right? All right. Thank you, Hillary. I appreciate you raising your hand over there. I see a just command in the uh, chat here. Uh, but that says both. Oh, it says both, both. Okay. Um, I have both. All right. And I see Kate says just command both. All right. This gets back into those of you that have one of them. I'm very excited that you have one of them, especially if it's command mobile. If you have both of them, maybe more excited. If you do not have them, who doesn't know what I'm talking about? Let me ask it that way. Who doesn't know what I'm talking about? About our mobile apps. All right. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Robert, you're separate because we're meeting soon. And I think you should have my email on that anyways. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, drop your email in the chat. I'll pull it and I'll send you an email with all the apps you're going to need as a real estate agent. Okay. When it comes to your database and working your database and communicating with your people, my biggest advice to you is to download the consumer app. If you go into your Play Store or your App Store right now and look for KW Buy and Sell, it'll be a white background, red letters. That app is the consumer app. It is only for the consumers. It is not for you. However, you're going to download it and you're going to sign into it. Okay. Um, since Tucker is the oldest one in here, he's the, actually the one that signed into my app. Um, and I use it because I want to know what the app does. All right. That way, when I'm giving it to people and I'm sharing it with people and they go, well, how's this different then? Then what? What's the first go-to you get? I use Zillow, Zillow. or Realtor Redfin. or Redfin. Well, I'm gooder than all of them. Pay attention to me, okay? Because one of the wonderful things you're going to do, and Ty, unless you got a question, put your hand down. I know you raised it for something earlier. What you can do, by the way, those, those are the kids. Um, what you can do is they can communicate to you through the consumer app. They can send you a request for touring and suggest up to three different dates. They can actually request information on a property. And while I talk, I'm going to sign into command. Who has signed into command and played with command? Every hand better be up, except for those that like just signed paperwork today type situation. So, um, I'm going to get on my, you might, you guys mind if I get on my uh, tech high horse for a second? Is that good or bad? Everybody okay with it? I think she's like, yeah. I'm okay. All right. It's, it's, it's what I do anyway. So it's my, it's my jam. All right. So I was the only at contest command. Um, who has their entire database in their command data in command right now? Like everybody they know. Who's done that yet? Anybody? I put, well, I put, I think mostly everybody I know in there. <laughs> All right. Um, Jenna, you got a question? I see two hands up. Ty, you got a question or no? No, I was just raising it because I had that. I was planning on answering your question. Okay. I'm working I just, on my whole database. So, Charity, what do you say? I'm sorry. I'm working on my whole database. You're working on your whole database. How are I you? I learned it last week through an Ignite class to send the Scott Leroy my full contact list, and they sent me back the full Excel sheet. And now I'm going through and updating any changes that need to be made, so that I can stop doing them one by one, and they'll just be done. 
Thank you very much, because that's exactly where I was going to go. So for those of you that have, thank you very much. That's where I was going to go. So those of you that do not have, I totally forgot why I opened command now. I was going to show you something. Um, those of you that have not uploaded your contacts to command yet, um, then I highly suggest figuring out where your people are. So where where is everybody? Um, look, Tia throwing me out there already. Chelsea, apparently you and I are going to be having uh, training. So I hope you're ready for it. Um, I have two market centers, folks. So I'm still learning people in, in, in around. So um, I will get you all my contact information in the chat beforehand. So if you guys ever need anything, reach out to me. Anything command related, my number one thing to you guys is go find out who your market center tech trainer is in your market center. If you do not have one, feel free to reach out to me um, or somebody that knows what they're doing with command, feel free to reach out to me. If you do not have all your contacts in your database, I mean, I only have 3,273 in mine. Um, most of us, who knows where their database is? I mean, I might as well talk about it briefly because you need to know about your database to talk to your buyers and to find people, right? Because this is all about finding new buyers. This is about finding clients, period. So does anybody know what I mean by database? Who knows what that word is? Everybody know? Like a repository. So our database is basically our pool of people that we know want to know or have met in some point or time. And they all pretty much live right here on our phones, okay? So the first thing you need to do is get these people into your, I know what I was gonna show you now. Um, get your people into your database. And as Charity was so nicely to share with us, if you download and you can download directly from your phone, you will go into your app store or the uh, Google Play and I will tell you right now how this is so painful. And I apologize because I used to be this person and I'm no longer this person. How many people you are Android users? So I'm going to tell you right now, you guys are going to have the hardest time with this. However, I do know a workaround. Um, if you go into the app store and download a, um, an app called SA Contacts Lite just like it sounds, S-A, Contacts Light. There is a um, free version and a paid version. Once you download the app, you'll be able to download all the contacts from your phone into a spreadsheet. Once you have that spreadsheet, my advice for the tech savvy people, and if, you don't have, if you're not that person, again, reach out to somebody that is, take that contact sheet and upload it to Google Contacts. Now, if your Android user, your phone is already based with a Google Gmail, most likely. So whatever's on your phone is probably already in your Google contacts, for whatever account that is. Go into your Google contacts. I'm going to share this with you guys, too, real quick, because this is actually really good information to have. Um, go into your Google contacts. And, and now the dogs are going to go nuts because they hear the diesel next door. It's my neighbor. Go into your contacts. You have this wonderful feature inside of Google Contacts right here that says merge and fix. So if by chance in your phone you have duplicates, Google's going to see that. And if you click on this merge and fix, it will bring up those people and you can tell Google to fix them and just say add all data add it, delete it, whatever the case may be, and you can go through that. Then you're going to have a clean database. Then you're going to go into your export. I got an iPad in my way. Go into your export, and you're going to export it as a CSV file. You can download it as a CSV or even an Outlook, as long as it's a CSV file, okay? Once you have that, you're going to email that off to support at scottleroymarketing.com. Ooh, Martin, don't start with me about that. I'll get with you. We're gonna talk about that too, because we're talking about our database. And you were late, don't make me yell at you. Um, by the way, unmute, how's the puppy? I gotta know how the puppy is, because I know the puppy was sick last time we talked. Um, uh, yeah, she's good, mate. She's now 45 pounds. 
<laughs> he got a great dane as a puppy, guys, just so you all know. So brought her, <laughs> brought her into the office. She was so cute and about 10 pounds. And that was like a month ago. Um, you're going to export. You're going to take that email to Scott Lurie Marketing. Scott Lurie Marketing will upload your database into command and you will not have to do it. So this whole concept of doing one at a time and adding one at a time is for the birds. So when we're looking for our people to work with, all right, as you're going to find out here, we're going to bring Hello. up the old... May I, may I ask a question? Sure can. Hi, this is Lee. Everything that the process that you just now ran down to us, is there somewhere we can find that process? Yep, on this recording after this class is done. <laughs> uh, okay. Yes, and as I said, find out who your market center tech trainer is, okay? Also, you can get it from here. It's, it's not detailed, but if you guys ever need anything, um, you can always go to Scott Leroy Marketing, if I could type. Um, and there are resources that Scott Leroy has to help with stuff like that. So I will tell you right now, I'm not going to stick on this, but just for a brief second, because you asked and it's a great question. When you go to Scott Leroy Marketing, you're going to have to log in. In order to log into Scott Leroy Marketing, all you need is your market center ID number, right? So as long as you know what your market center number is, you can log in and get all the resources Scott Roy has for you. Um, they have training resources. They have questionnaires. They'll build out your website for you and everything like that. Um, this detailed of what I went over, they're not going to do that for you. This is my suggestion to get with your market center tech trainer. And if you can't, you don't have one or you don't have one that's available, then feel free to reach out to me and I'll do what I can for you. Okay. So I was mentioning the consumer app, and this is very appropriate, more so for your buyers, because we want to win our buyers and we want to keep our buyers, right? So I'm not, I was, I was, I pushed my, my uh, website. I even built my website out, made a really nice website. Um, however, I have learned, I'll show you my website. It's got everything. It's got all the bells and whistles just about, right? KW, when we built out our technology, went out and asked the consumer, what do you want in a website? And the consumer said, we just want a place to search for properties and contact our agent. So in order to reach our clients, we want to push them to our website and we want to push them to the mobile app. Let me ask you guys this question. How many of you today spend time on your computer looking at Facebook? CT is shaking her head. You spend time on your computer or do you spend time on your phone looking at Facebook? Charity's Maybe pretty adamant, no? On the, on the phone or mm. both sometimes. Bulk of your time is spent where though? Think about it. Oh. Right. Right. On my right. phone. So where do you think our consumers are living? On their phones. So if you had a website or a mobile app, which one do you think they're gonna be on more? The mobile app. Y'all are fast learners. Look at that. So again, my website, I built it out. I have everything. I have a home valuation page. I have a market report page. I have a school search page. I have a mortgage calculator. I've got Keller Mortgage Keller covered. I've got my blog. I've got trusted vendors. I've got to download my app. You all, if you ask Scott Leroy to build out your websites and they will build this. Matter of fact, you all should already have a download your app page on your website. I hate to say this, but I'm going to brag for a second. Mine, at least, I put the really cool video in when this came out, just because, listen to this. Okay, Matt. Just because of the music. Go ahead. Matt, Matt, can you show us how to get that on our mobile app? This is, not, this is on your website, not your mobile app. This it's is on, on the website. website. Okay. On website. Just so, on the website. Uh, this is advanced training for the website. This is entering code and stuff. It's like cheating. To get oh, okay. Started. So this is through Scott Leroy? Not this video. They won't do this for you. This is I did for myself because I want to, I'm extra. I go. So, so Scott, I mean, um, Matt, you're bragging because we can't do that. <laughs> you can do that. You can do that. And I will help you do that. Okay. Okay. So okay. I will. <laughs> But my point, what I, and I'm not bragging, and I apologize if you feel that way, but my point is, is I went and built this page out and I wanted to make it as nice as I could and put all these bells and whistles in it. And then I got to thinking about it. Nobody cares. 
Why and do you think nobody cares? Around. If you're if you're on your phone right now, and I asked you to, I want you to go to. I want you to go to. I want you to go to Target's website. I'm going to use Target. I want you to go to Target's website and look for something. Or I want you to go. Let me rephrase it. I want you to go to Target and look for something online. And I want you to do it on your phone. Are you going to open up your browser and go to Target's website, or are you going to open up your Target app that most of you probably have? I'm going to open my Target app. So again, I did all this stuff for this website and why, right? Um, now, whether people visit your website, hold on, I got a bunch of chats here. Let me get caught up on the chats. But people want to pay me now. Calm down, relax. I'll show you how to do it. Um, here's the reason why it's important to use the app or the website. You can choose whichever one you want, all right? So this is Tucker. As again, I have him signed into my mobile app so I can do stuff. And if you look in the timeline over here, do you see these wonderful little things? See this user contact? You see where it says here, Tucker James requested a tour? That's because I went into the consumer app and contacted me, the agent, and requested a tour to see this house. And then I can go right here and I can actually look at this and see what house he wanted. Did and you go, go out there? What's that? Did you actually go? No, this is my dog. Okay. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, everyone yeah. should have a test person so that while you're learning and you're growing and how to best run your business and how to best be in front of your people, you need a test subject. Yes, now, I heard you say that. But my question for you is when you go to those sites and you set it up like that, are they expecting you to come out? So in this situation, if you do a request tour, what, what you get on this request tour is they give you, um, they give three available times they want to go see it, okay? That's what's mm -hmm. available in the app. They have three time slots they're allowed to put in there, okay? Mm -hmm. So then I'm able to go into MLS and showing time and look and see what's available. And then I can contact the client back and go, hey, one of your times was available or none of your times are available. And yet these times are, would one of these work better for you? Because people can request what they want. We can't go anywhere unless the property is available. So, okay. but in theory, in theory, I'm not, uh, I'm doing all this right from my phone. A mm -hmm. showing request isn't a scheduled appointment. That is correct, right? They're just requesting the showing. They want to go see this property. At this point, it's time for me to find out if I can actually schedule that time or not, all right? They're not scheduling it. They're asking you to schedule that time. The point behind this is, is that as our people, as we use our mobile app, let me give you a better person. So this is actually a client that I'm working with right now. He was a referral from a past client. And I can tell you at uh, yesterday at 4.30, he was on the mobile app looking at properties. I can tell you that he has created a group of favorites. In fact, I can go up here to my saved searches and I can look at all the favorite, all the different types of searches he's made. Well, these are all the criteria he's got. The plus side to this is in order for us to get our buyers what they want, when we interview them and we have those consults and we'll get into that a little bit, um, they're going to tell us one thing, yet what we're going to see them searching for half the time is going to be different. Not a lot all the time. Sometimes it's going to be drastic, all right? This information you're seeing on the screen, we do not tell them we know, all right? It's like big brothers watching, right? Do you want, how happy are you all that you're having a conversation with somebody about wanting to buy something and the very next time you open up Facebook, it's there, right? Because all our devices are listening to us all the time. We don't like it, so don't go tell your clients you know they looked at this property on Rush Road. That's no, we don't do that. However, I will call you up and say, hey, Sharon, I was looking at some properties today for somebody else. And while I was in there, I noticed this property at 13202 Rush Road, and I thought it might fit what you're looking for. And most likely they're going to go, 
I was just looking at that yesterday. Oh, were you? Well, we're on the same page then. Um, you want me to see if it's available and go check it out? I just saw Charity's face go, oh my God. So by the way, I'm a script master. So I, I can script nearly anything. People hate me for it, but I do it. So um, work in your database. This is basically working your database and working your current clients. Okay. Any questions on this? I'll open it up for a minute. Anybody got any questions, comments, anything like that? Matt, there's a question in the chat. Um, Thank you. Question is, how are we setting up buyers or directing them to the- Oh, account? the one before that was first. The one before that one. Uh, people who are using the agent's mobile app, are they typically clients who have already signed a buyer's agreement contract or people who are just searching, browsing the market? The answer is yes to all the above. Yes to all the above. You want to put your app in the hands of as many people as possible. So how many of you carry business cards? Everybody raise your hands or shout it out. Who's, who carries business cards or has business cards on them? Always. Okay. All right. All right. Stop it. I'm kidding. You can do it if you want to. However, I say stop it. I'm going to tell you why I say stop it. Two things. The last time you were, um, the last time you were anywhere and a salesperson came up to you and started talking to you and you did not you just were not interested in that conversation. What was the first thing you told them to end that conversation? Or the first thing you asked them to end that conversation? I blame it on my kids. Okay. <laughs> you asked okay, for that's, card. That's one way. I just you have any contact information. Correct. I heard there's a couple of people talking at the same time. You ask, hey, you got a business card? And everybody reaches in their pockets. Okay. Here's mine, right? And by the way, that's Tucker. That's the six-year-old. But he is my logo. Um, you go, hey, here's my business card. Now, what do you think? What do you do with that business card after they give it to you? Because what happens after they get that business card? The conversation yeah. pretty much stops, right? So they're done. They're like, oh, cool. Yeah, let's talk. I'll talk to you soon. Give me a call. And you got away from me. Like, thank God that's over, right? <laughs> and what do you do when you have that business card in your hand? What's the first thing you do? Just probably throw it in my bed. Throw it in my purse. Or <laughs> right now, really don't pay too much attention. What if? What if you were able to tell them, you know what, Lori, I don't have a card on me right now, but I have my digital card. You want me to text it to you or email it to you? Because I'll be more than happy to send you my business card. Now they just asked for it. Go ahead and talk yourself out of that. I see. Look, my business give card them a is business digital. card and take and send them a digital. You're going to do both. They're not going to take both. Well, soon I did it just the paper, other day. <laughs> soon as you give them that piece of paper, they're going to be like, "I'm that's good." No, no, I actually did it the other day, and the gentleman he's trying to sell his family land in in Northern Virginia. Okay. All right. Miss Gaines, what you got for me? I see your hand up. Sorry, Hillary, I'll get you next. So I think this is kind of like a conversation. Like it seems like a struggle, like when you're talking to people who like really embrace technology and those that want to do, I don't want to say, well, it is more antiquated way when it's, when you're talking about technology, I like me personally, I don't like anything papers. I don't even get appointments for my uh, you know, like here's an appointment reminder. No, it's like I put it in my phone or whatever. So I don't like any paper stuff. So I'm kind of more leaning and driven towards like you doing everything digitally and technology while still capturing, even making contacts, like utilizing my social media platform. I have like in, in just my announcement when I became, um, I you know, a realtor, I reached over 400 people and got like, 300 comments just in that announcement. So I feel like there's other ways to capture, you know, conversation. Of course you want to do it in, you know, person as much as you can, but like, I'm not so much like even picking up the phone, I do the text messaging more and people still respond. 
um, to the texting. I, I don't even I answer set appointments by text messages. Right. And people don't even answer the phone for a num like they don't answer the phone anymore. Or they're like super busy. But I know like when they slow down or when they have a moment, they're going to look at the text and respond back to me or I can follow up. Even if I forget, I'm going to remember, oh, I text that person and I can follow up with the text and still have a conversation where I can follow up with the phone call. But most of the initial stuff, it's just like, you know, people just, um, I don't know, it's just, it's an interesting conversation, but I'm more of a technology advantage person. So two things I get out of that. Thank you for sharing. Number one is you and the rest of you, you need to learn to read people. So when you're having the conversations, there are going to be people that will prefer to have a card. So be careful when you say, I don't have a card. Can I text it to you? And they go, and they pop open the flip phone and go, what? Don't turn around and go, oh, well, here, here's my card. <laughs> it gets a little weird at that point, right? However, you could say, hey, well, let me get your number or your email. Can I send you a quick email? And it's got all my contact information. So if you're going to choose the route to say, hey, I don't have a card, keep going that way because they probably have an email, right? Um, if they really, really don't, then just flat out ask them for their number and say, uh, can I give you a call tomorrow? I don't want to hold you up. I know you're doing things, but go, right? Um, and yes, the tech side is where we're going. Uh, National Association of Realtors has numbers on that um, as well as everybody else. Uh, response time for emails is days. Response time for text message is minutes. So if you're making contact, keep that in mind. Hillary, I know you were talking first. So I'm going to let you go. And then Don, I'll come to you. Um, I was going to say, I actually have my QR code set up as my screen saver. So if I'm uh, like in the store, or if I run across anyone, they can actually just shoot it with their camera. Is there a way to get that to connect to an app to have it go directly to like be able to download the app? Do you know? So where did you get your QR code from? From the Scott Leroy marketing. Okay. So yes, you can create a QR code for anything. So there are plenty of free QR code makers out there. In fact, if you are in Google Chrome, and this is the only platform I know that this works in, here is my website, for example, right? If I right click on this, tell me what you see on that menu up there. I'll highlight it for you. Create QR code. So all I have to do is click on that and Google just made me a QR code. And now I can download that QR code. Sorry, I clicked on something else. So now I can download that QR code. And when you scan it, matter of fact, go ahead, scan that QR code on your screen right now. For those that are not on their mobile devices already, scan it, it will take you right to my website. Matter of fact, it will take you right to my download my app page because I made it from what's on the screen right now. So yes, you can do that. Yeah. Wow, so you can do that in command. You can create your own QR code in command. No, this is just by Google Chrome. It's not in command. Oh, you have Google so I can go to any website I want, okay? Um, where, I can, where can we scan it? Because I can't see it. Hold on. Let me put it, let me get it back up there for you. Let me recreate it again. Hang on. Okay, that's in Google Chrome. So you, it should be in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Can you guys see it? If, you're, if the images, the people on the camera are, uh, are blocking it, you can just drag the pictures out of the way. You can drag us all out of the way. You can actually make us all. Oh, go nice. I like this. So uh, Google Chrome, right click on anything. I mean, you want me to go, give me a website. Well, we talked about Target earlier, right? So let's go to Target. So here's Target. Right click on Target's website. Once it comes up, I'm going to say create QR code. If you scan that right now, it's going to go to Target. So you can make a QR code about anything you want. All right. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. And yes, this is another way to be in contact with those potential buyers and sellers, right? It's all about finding ways to be in contact. Now, I'm a huge, this is not the class for this. I've taught this and I will teach it forever. I'm a huge fan of QR codes and open houses, right? We are still in a mindset. We have been taught for two years as a society how to scan QR codes. How many people knew what a QR code was four years ago, right? 
not many people uh, in a lot of cases, unless you're very tech savvy and stuff like that. When the pandemic hit and everybody started putting QR codes so you didn't have to touch something, almost everybody knows what a QR code now is. And guess what? We are conditioned. How many of you have walked into a restaurant or anywhere and in order to get a menu or something like that, you see a QR code and the first thing you do is open your camera and scan it. It's sad, but true. 100%. Thank you, Terry. That is, yet we've been conditioned for it. It's our job to take advantage of that conditioning in what we do in our business. Donna, you, you're next. I was just going to say, I love this because I'm, I'm old school <laughs> and I've always had cards. And what I did with my cards so that they didn't get tossed is I had on the back, I would put a tip chart. And this I'm talking about years and years ago, I, I put a tip chart on the back and I would tell them, by the way, on the back of my card is this tip chart and people would say, oh, and they would put it in their pocket. And then when I started working with seniors, I had a company that would make business cards for me that the top of it was actually a magnifier. And it was also just one that would fit and they'd say, oh, man, this is really cool because I need this to read the menus when I get to the restaurant. And so I would do something with my business card that made them want to save it rather than toss it. Um, but this is this is great with the digital card. Didn't even didn't even think about that. That's All great. right. So I see a couple of things in the chat and and then I'm going to get take some more questions here. So for those of you that are having struggle scanning the QR codes. OK, I'm going to give you a I'm going to give you guys a different QR code to scan. I got to find I got to figure out which one I want to give you. I know what to do. Um, if you are an Android user, yes, I'm being that guy. If you are an Android user, when you open your camera, you have to change the settings on the camera that you're scanning a QR code. If you have an iPhone, all you need to do is hold it up, scan it, a little yellow box shows up, and then there'll be a little box on the bottom that says open in whatever. When you click on that, it will take you to your browser on your phone and open up what you scan. Yeah. But Android, you have to actually change a setting in depending on the Android device, I should say. The ones I've had experience with with people who have had troubles is they are, they need to scan differently. So, that all right. Is usually the case with some of the older um, Android phones with the nine and newer, you shouldn't need to do that. Right. Like I said, there's different circumstances that will allow you to do it differently. All right. Um, Ms. Gaines, you have your hand up again. Please. I was just going to share. I had a couple people asking how I did the how I did my digital business card, um, and it's really easy. And um, so basically, when I place my order on the Scott Leroy um, marketing website, and you create your your card, when you go to your, when you get it the card the way that you want it to look, how you're going to order it. All I did was use my screenshot feature on my phone, which then converted it into a um, a, uh, a photo and then I just upload it in my phone and that's how I send out a digital card. That is one way to do it. You can also just take a picture of it. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to get them the, um, we just want to get them the uh, uh, card. They want to, we just want to get them the information. All right. Um, I, I personally, I personally, uh, I had, I had my card designed originally, but then I got the actual uh, designer format so i was able to make some changes to it when i changed offices so i have everything and i can just download it as a jpeg or anything like that and i just add it to my phone that way but yes that's another way to do it um i know you guys said george mcdowell the other day and i know george is big on scripts i'm big on scripts as well so right there that qr code i'll give you the uh actual web address too if you want if you scan that QR code, it's going to take you into my Google Docs and it's going to show you a page and you're going to have three links on that page because there are three big books from Keller Williams University for scripts. So if you want to practice your scripts and become efficient in communications, get your scripts and practice your scripts. As I said, I am big on scripts. Now, I will tell you right now, this is going to take you, when you click on those links, it will take you into mykw.kw.com. Thank you. There's a uh, free digital business card link in the chat for those of you that need it. 
Um, this will take you to mykw.kw.com. It will take you into the KW Connect side of the platform. When it first, when each of those links first open up, you're going to be on the main page of the script books. If you scroll to the bottom, there'll be a red bar that allows you to order the script books. I believe they're roughly $20, $25. They will come to you. Like this, bound, and as you see, there are 214 pages in this one, and this is a lead generation script book. If you look across, once the page opens, if you look across the top middle, just about a quarter of the way down, you'll see a, but, a tab that says materials. In the materials tab, on the left-hand side of the student materials, there'll be a link that says download. So you can actually download these as PDFs directly to your computer okay can you, can you repeat where that's at right there on that qr code if you oh. scan that qr code and i will put in the chat the actual uh link as well if you follow that link it will take you right to i'll show you what it is because working with your people and, and being able to win the buyers or win the sellers, whatever it is you're looking to work with, if you don't have the scripts down, guess what? You're not going to be able to uh, capture them. So this link that I just gave you would take you into my documents inside of my Google Drive, and it will take you directly to this. Okay. Each one of these right here where it says click here has a link. If you click on that link, it will take you into mykw.kw.com. And I'll show you real quick. And it'll also be on this recording. So you guys will be able to check it out later. Come on. So as I said, when this opens up, if you look... Am I, do I have my share up? Because I can't remember now. You guys see my screen? Still? Yes, we can. Yeah, okay. My, it is there. Let me do this real quick also. But I've yet to see the QR code. I just made it go away. So the link, the actual, the actual link is in the chat too, though. So as I said, right here, it opens up to course information. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you can click here to purchase materials or right here where it says materials. If you click on that, here is the file to download. Now, they will download as zip files, just so you know. So if you do not know how to work with a zip file, find somebody to give you some support on that. Um, they're not that challenging or difficult, just so you know. But this is where you can get all of your um, scripts at so you can work with stuff, all right? So what about the script books that came with the course material? There are scripts in there as well, but they're not as many. Okay. Sorry, only one home. I gotta let the dogs in and out. Um, all right. Let's get back into some other stuff here. Where's our slide deck at? Can I go back and ask a question for just a minute? Yeah, go ahead. When we were talking about the Keller Williams app, are we supposed to already have logged on? Like when we first signed up, is that some information that we already had, like an established app already, or just go ahead and download it? I wasn't sure if I was signing in as an agent or if I was like signing in as a consumer, as the buyer. All right. So depending on, so we have two apps. All right. Okay. I, I should have signed in for my phone. I did the... The one, the first one, they said the consumer one, basically. The right, so the consumer you. app is for the consumer. And mm -hmm. you should have a practice person in your database that you can practice contracts and all that stuff like that. So like I do, I, I have my dogs, I'm signed in as my dog. I use one of my other emails and I create an account as if I'm a consumer because I want to be able to use the app and play with it so I can tell my people how to use it better. All right. So yes, you should sign into it. You can still use your name if you want to. It really doesn't matter. Um, I just do a fictitious, per, fictitious person. That way it, I can tell the difference between me and what I'm practicing with. 
That, that was my issue. That was my question. I think I signed in, but I was like, wait, I'm not supposed to be a realtor signing again. I'm supposed to be a buyer signing in. Right. So I want to make sure. <laughs> okay. And you and look, every time you send that app out, when they sign into your app, you're going to get a notification to your command. You're going to well, get a notification. Who's linking that app to me? Like, what am I giving them? Is linking the app to me? All right. So let me get out of this. That's a good okay. question. That's a great question. So let's that's, that's the part I got myself confusing just now. All right, let's hit that real quick. So if you go into command, for those of you that don't know what these little icons are over here on the left-hand side, you all see that? Mm -hmm. All right, if you don't know what they all mean like I do, click on the red KW up here and it will expand that until you start learning what those icons are. So the very last applet on the bottom is the consumer applet. We're going to click on that. Got two people in the waiting room. Um, you're going to click on that. Mm -hmm. In this part up on the top right, you're going to see where it says site and app settings. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you click on site and app settings, this is going to go in right here. It says URLs. So for those of you that do not know what your website is or you wish to change your website to something else, you click on the URLs, if it's going to work right now, come on. All right. By the, way, by the way, Tuesdays are update days for command. So, all right. So right here, this subdomain, this is my KW website. And then this is my URL right here. All right. So when I share this, every one of us has the exact same HTTP app.kw.com but all the letters and numbers at the end is different. So when you give this code out and somebody downloads it, it tags you as the agent. Okay. okay. So what, for, so for me to see what they did, where is that they coming back? Just autom in order for them, in order for you to see what they did, they must sign in and create an account. And after they create the account, that's where you'll be able to see what they're doing in the timeline. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Nope, I'm totally clear now. All right. Anybody need like a five minute break just to stand up and stretch your legs or anything like that? I mean, it is. Charity's just like, now nah, I'm just going to stretch right here and call it a day. So are you dancing or stretching? What was that? I feel like that was a little fancy like that or something. I don't know what you were doing. See? All right. Um, let me jump in the chat. Got some more stuff in here. I thought Tia putting stuff up. Thank you, Tia. Uh, Matt. Yes, ma'am. I hate to say, I hate to ask you this, but can you go back over that one more time, what you just did? Because I feel like I just missed something. I'm going to say I would love to and no at the same time. Okay. So we can move on and all of this is recorded. So you can go back and watch it. And again, if you guys need any help understanding where the consumer app fits in and all of that, get with your market center tech trainers, or if you don't have one or one's not available, feel free to reach out to me. Like I said, before we're done, I'll drop my contact stuff into the chat so you guys can grab it, all right? Okay, thanks. Was there another, I hear, I hear voices. Was there another question? No, hearing none. All right, where'd I leave off? Um, so we went over this. Uh, does everybody know how to add smart plans or where to get smart plans? How about that? Do you know where to find them? Now, I see Charity saying yes. Are you like the honor roll student here? So where do I find smart plans at? Command. Where in command? Uh, the whole thing even says on the side that the smart plan button. Right, in the smart plan button. So... Who is so, so just so you guys know, I got like five screens. So I had to move you guys. I got tired of moving you on this screen, but I'm looking at you all here and the cameras over here, just so you know. Um, who is, has not, who has not announced their new career in real estate to their database? Who has not just made this super broad, super exciting announcement? Me. Who wants to do it with some, uh, a simple smart plan? You don't even have to make it. I'll give it to you for free. Natasha says Okay, that. let's go. Let's do it. I'll give it to you for free. 
Um, let me ask a question. I, I'll ask one here. Is there anybody in this group right now that uh, can tell me if the smart plan that I'm about ready to give works or not? Of course. Yeah. No. All right. Yeah, oh. because you used it on your dog. No, actually, there's somebody in this group that actually used it. She's just not saying nothing. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. She's being bashful, but it's okay. So if you I go in, I did. I put it on the chat. Oh, did you? Okay. I did. So if you go into smart plans, Scott Roy normally will load some of the basic smart plans for you that are available. If you want to find a smart plan. Go into the library tab up on the top. From here, you can search for anything. We as agents can build smart plans and share them to everybody. Keep in mind, they are free for now. There is future talk, no idea when, that if you publish a plan that you will be able to charge like a dollar or something like that for anybody that downloads it because you are the one that built it. Every plan you download, with the exception of the Keller Williams ones, only like two of them can actually be adjusted, um, you can edit any of them, all right? So if you are a new agent and you are looking to build your database right now, if you go into the library, right up here, it says smart plan name. If you change that to the author and then go put my last name in there. So for those of you that have the ability to multitask, you're gonna find this. And then I'm gonna ask you guys to give me two seconds so I can go wrangle a puppy. I think I need to, excuse me, my oops. All right, I just put the big one out with her and let's see if that works. I was just so if you go in here, you have the ability to download. If you go right over on the bottom right-hand corner, it says add smart plan. If you click on that, at this point, it gives you the option to change the name of the plan if you so wish to change it. I won't be offended if you do. And then you just hit download. Once you do that, you'll go back to my smart plans and you will have this smart plan in your database to use, all right? Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that I got 40 plans and I got to go find that plan real quick. That means I got to use it. That's correct. Thank you. Who said that? Okay. I see you now. I can see more because I put you guys on a different screen. Um, new agent onboarding, new agent announcement, not that one. It's somewhere in here. That's not the one I want. Anyways, you can get that list. Isn't it the new agent announcement? No, this is this is a different one. No, you called it newly licensed agent. There you go. That's what it is. Yeah, see, I don't even remember. I figured it would give me everything, but apparently it's not. Let's see what it does. I know I have it in here. It's my darn plan. You know what? Let's do it this way. It's published. Let me put it, let me do it this way. So it's right here, right? When you download it, you're going to have it. You can go right over here on the right where it says edit the little pencil. All right. Everybody see that? Again, keep in mind, folks, if you've got the camera blocking part of the view, you can drag people around because um, Zoom likes to be on the right hand side for some reason. So if you click on the little edit, which each and every one of you are going to have to do, just so you know. When you open this, this is going to be a, uh, it's a four, it's technically a four step plan for you to touch, talk to your database um, and gather info and, and make connections with them. However, all four steps actually have three steps. So it's actually 12 steps. That was confusing. Sound like a country line dance all of a sudden. So when you first download this, you're gonna have this wonderful HTML email right here. This is what it's gonna look like. Give you a little preview. Now, I know you all are probably looking up here and seeing all this weird stuff up here. These are what we call merge tags. As long as you have set up 
and Scott Leroy does a very good job at it. As long as you have set up your marketing profile, that stuff will auto load for your marketing profile. All right. So what this is, it's an announcement. It just basically says, hey, I've been working towards a new career in real estate and I have joined and it will put your market center name down there and it will put the location with the city and state. And I wanted to let you know, blah, 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 blah. There'll also be a link on here for them to go and download your app. This is the part each of you will need to edit. Otherwise, this link will not work. So when you get this downloaded, you're going to go right here and then the elliptical, it's an elliptical or meatballs, depending on what you like to call it. When you click on that, you're going to click on edit design. The warning that pops up, do not worry about. It won't pop up on me because it's my plan. You're going to get a warning that pops up that says, if you edit this design, it will change the design for all smart plans in your database. So when I edit this, it's not going to edit anything you did. So basically, if you have one HTML email and you're using it in multiple smart plans, if I edit it on this one, it's going to edit it for all the smart plans. Make sense? You're never going to do that in this particular situation because it's only really good for the smart plan. Just know that moving forward when you create smart plans. You, if you are, again, I will not be offended. I kind of did this in a rush. This is just a rough draft, and, but it's good. Um, you want to edit any of the language, just click on it. So the little blue block box shows up. Click on the edit button here. And then you can go over here on the right hand side and you can change out any of that language and make it more you and personalize a little bit more. All right. Then you're going to hit done. What you will have to do, no questions asked, is you are going to have to hit the download my app, hit the edit, and then over here where it says link, it's going to say landing page. You're going to leave that there, but then you're going to go over here and choose the landing page, and you're going to go look for your download my app. Okay? Yours might be a download my app or download my app here, whatever that page is called. You're going to add it in there and you're going to hit done, you're going to hit save, you're going to hit the X, you're going to say yes, save the changes, and now that has been edited. So now when you send this out to your database, they will be able to download your app, all right? Um, you will need Twilio. If you don't know what Twilio is, again, get with your Market Center tech trainer or give me a call and I will help you with it. Um, but this plan is basically a, here's the announcement of I'm in the business. The next announcement that goes out is you're looking to update their contact information along with providing your new contact information, mainly your new business email, because they probably have your phone number, or if they don't, you're going to give it to them. Um, this one is basically about, um, it's more, it's, it's about the people, not the property. So it's not always about buying and selling homes. It's about keeping people in their homes. So going back to the contractor conversation we had, maybe you they need a contractor, maybe they need a lender to refinance, to stay in their home or to pay for college or whatever that may be, right? Um, so that's basically what that one says. And then the last one that goes out is actually asking for business and asking for referrals, all right? Um, so again, if you go into the library, put my last name in there, you'll be able to find this and download this and start using this on a regular basis. Questions? Excuse me, Matt. Um, yep. This is attached to, it'll go to their emails, right? As long as you add Twilio, this will go to their emails and it will text them. Okay, this that's what I wanted to know. Because a lot of my people, I don't have emails for them, but I do have their phone number to be texted. So that plan is set up for that reason. So you okay. can add people to that plan. And if you have an email form, they're going to get the email. If you have a phone number, they're going to get the text message. If you have both, they're going to get both. Okay? I just signed up for, is it Twilio? Yep. Yeah, I just signed up for that. So. For those of you that do not have Twilio, I highly recommend you looking into it. That's another class. Okay. All right. Um, Put me back in presentation mode here. Any questions so far? I see my yes. chat. So, so Matt, the, the, Matt, the script, the um script books, when you order, it's asking you for the date of they're asking you for a date of um, let me see, date of course. What does that mean? 
when you took uh, when you took probably one of the script courses, just put down the date that you took at night. Emma, you got oh, you got. I thought she said you got four more. I'm like, wait a minute, we didn't talk about this today. Okay. Um, I think I missed a question earlier. Before I go forward, has anybody got any questions about anything that yes, I missed? This is, this is right. Lee. How how are you spelling? What is that? Twilio, you said. Twilio, T W I L I O. I think it's one L. It's in it's in command. If you go into your settings inside uh -huh. of command, once you get into settings, you're going to scroll all the way to the very bottom, and it's on the very bottom. And on the right hand side, there's going to be a place for you to, to purchase it. And if you click on it, it'll take you into the marketplace and you're just going to follow up with the follow the instructions to sign up on it. And again, if you run into any issues, reach out to your market center tech trainer, your mentor or coach, or if need be, you can reach out to me. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions that I missed? I know it's a lot of stuff in a short period of time, so. Speak up. I'm not afraid to answer questions. And as you see, we kind of have gone down rabbit holes a little bit, but I'm used to it. What do you think is the fastest way for you to get clients other than that smart plan that I sent you? What's one of the best ways for you to get out there and start generating business? Just communicating, talking to people. Okay. Calling. Calling your sphere of interest. Open houses. Tie for the win. Open houses is one way. That's probably your best way. That's going to actually put you in front of people that are actively looking to buy and sell. Okay? So think about it like that. Any activities that you want to do to pick up your buyers, make sure you're putting yourself in a position where the buyers are. Okay? Are um, buyers doing open houses now? What, what's that? Are open houses actually happening now we, we never stop them well i, I know that but <laughs> the pandemic covid whatever you want to call it i know it slowed down a lot on somebody walking into the house for an open house you like, would be surprised it did not no my center just did a big open house saturday last weekend yeah, last weekend we did big open house where everyone went out to support other agents open houses. During the pandemic, we actually had lines waiting for people to come in because we had restrictions of the number of people allowed in the house. So, okay. and because we are in such a heavy seller's market, the buyers are out there and they're not going to stop. They're going to be there period in the story. So we just had people waiting and we took turns. Um, it. So it, it was a challenge, yet we were able to get into the houses. Your biggest issue right now, I would say, is um, the houses aren't staying on the market long enough. So by the time I put a house active on the market, it's on the contract in a day or two. I don't even have time to set up an open house. With that said, there are still plenty of homes out there that are not selling that fast. So make sure that you are, I'm assuming every market center has a uh, behind the scenes, back office, private Facebook group for your, for your group, right? So I would be putting in that Facebook group who has a listing that I can host an open house at. Um, most of your top producers, your teams, they don't typically like doing open houses because they don't feel like it's worth it. Yet it's a great place for new agents to get in the habit of doing things, work your scripts, meet people, get through all the, you know, the willies and work those out and learn how to talk to people and start creating activities. Okay. Um, it's huge that way. Uh, can we just walk in to open houses and introduce ourselves? Uh, tell me more about that. Because I have an answer, but I want to make sure I understand your question. Oh, yeah. Hi. I asked this question. Um, yeah, I just see the open houses going on in my area. And yeah, I'm just asking, like, can, can I just go in one of them and just try to talk to the buyers? and? No, no. That's why I wanted you to clarify your question. No, yeah. that open house is for that client, for that, I'm sorry, right. for that agent. Now, could you walk in to an open house and go up to the agent and introduce yourself and let them know that you're new to Keller Williams 
and you are just checking out the open houses in the area and ask that agent like, you know, well, how's it going? How busy has it been? Of course, if you walk in, there's 50 people in the house, you know how busy it is. Um, you can introduce yourself and create um, business relationships like that, yet you're not going to walk in and actually talk to people that are in the open house um, because that would be that that would kind of be the ethical side of you don't want to do that. So, um, so now, for me, be that, able to do uh, get a buyers. I have to do host one of my. You're going to host your own open house. Yeah, correct. So you're going to reach out to um, listing agents in your in your market center and mm -hmm. ask anybody who has a listing and if you can host that open house. Prior to doing so. Prior to doing so, I strongly encourage, strongly encourage that you guys shadow somebody on an open house at least two to three times and make it different people. That way you can find um, how other people do it and then take that and then kind of build your own method, right? There's certain things you must do. You have to have your open house sign and there's other aspects to promote the open house. Yet, how you go about doing that, you can you can work it your own way, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, um, you're more than welcome. Any other questions? In your books, I don't know exactly what page it's on. You should have a buyer lead sheet. Okay, what that buyer lead sheet is is basically the questions you're asking when you have a buyer consult and you bring them into the office and sit them down. Um, and these are questions that you can ask at an open house when you're talking to people. So basically, how long you've been looking to buy? How much are you looking to spend? What do you think about this house? It's all about conversation. Um, a lot of times you want to focus on, and if you guys start reading scripts and get into script practicing, you're going to learn that it's not always about talking about the real estate side of it, as it's more about talking to them about who they are. All right. Yet this buyer lead sheet is a very good way to have that real estate conversation and figure out what's going on. Um, role play qualifying your buyers. Um, we don't have time for it, obviously. And just so you guys know, I know this is a lot of information. Um, the Ignite course material, this is technically a four hour class that has been reduced down to two hours. All right. I know two hours out of your evenings in the week can be a struggle for some people, imagine if it was four. So keep in mind what's here, there's a lot more to it. So having relationships with people in your office that you can work with and talk with, even you guys. How many of you in this group have exchanged phone numbers and emails already and started like hanging out and talking to one another? Anybody? I have. Okay, you all should do that, all right? You guys should become your own script practice partners, okay? Matter of fact, you should get a little group together and do it because you want feedback from other people, all right? And how you do your scripts are going to improve your results on getting your clients and getting things done, all right? Um, sign and buyer agreements. This for me is a touchy su subject because as much as I look out here and there are... 37 of you in the room right now. And I want each and every one of you 38 because somebody's coming back or hasn't been able to get in. I think I've seen that name six times. Um, as much as I want each and every one of you to tell me right now that you have a new buyer that you're working with and you're ready to go. And as wonderful as that is, you also need to slow down enough to learn the paperwork. So getting these buyer agreements done and knowing how to do them and do them right Go back to your pre-licensing class, right? What did the, the, what did the pre-licensing class teach you to do? Or should I say not to do? Ch Charity, why are you shaking your head no? You don't want to go back to class? It, it was that bad? Come on now. You, I, all I see you is doing this. <laughs> now I'm never doing that again. No. It, it just taught us all the stuff that you need to know to pass the like state exams, but now I need the actual information on what to really do day to day. You are answering my question, basically, because what you got in that class is all your law and all the stuff that's going to put you in jail, get you fined and get your license taken away. Right. <laughs> and, and not how to actually run your business. That's our job. All right. I understand. This right here, though, getting your buyer agreement signed and getting your contracts done. 
That's the stuff that's going to get you in trouble. This is what I want to know. Hands down, this is the stuff that's going to get you in trouble. That's why I said go back to class. Remember how you learned about all the stuff? This, the paperwork is the number one thing that will get you in trouble in this business. Okay. Other than your mouth. And when I say your mouth, I mean slipping up and saying something or committing to something that you don't know what you're talking about. Because when these people hear something, they instantly go, you said it, I want it. So watching how you talk to people is key. But the paperwork is the number one thing that's going to get you in trouble. Okay. So make sure that you're practicing your paperwork. All right. Um, get in again. Have a, have a creative person. I don't care if you use Superman, Spider-Man. Like I said, you want to use one of my mutts, please? I, who wants her, matter of fact, if she don't stop barking? Um, this is not what you're going to teach me tonight. What's that? The dog or the buyer agreement? The buyer agreement. Yes, we're going to go over the buyer agreement real quick for you guys. <laughs> Wow, somebody's demanding all of a sudden. Um, but this is the stuff that you have to learn and you have to practice. I'll show you. Unless you've got a photographic memory, though, you need to practice this on a regular basis, right? And when I say practice, I mean, every one of you right now, when you're done class, over the next couple of days, get in, create an opportunity, do the buyer agreement, send it out to be signed. Like I said, this is why I use uh, the dogs in another email because I send it out that way I can, now I don't have to do it. I've done it enough, but you want to send it out. You want to see how DocuSign works, right? We assume our clients know what they're doing. Most of the time they're like, uh, click, 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 click. But you also need to know how it lays out and what that looks like, okay? So the more you practice it, the faster you're going to get it done. Now, remember what I said earlier? It's eight o'clock on a Saturday. And your client said, write me an offer. What are you going to do? Right? Well, if you don't know what you're doing, it ain't going to be, it's going to be. Not at all. That's why you got to. Uh, at midnight, you're going to be in, who can I call? Because I don't know what to do. I don't know where this goes, right? And all offers are due by 9 a.m. Sunday morning. What are you going to do? Yes. Oh, yeah. Practice, 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 right? All right. You want to learn how to do buyer agreements. I'm going to take you through the process. I'm going to take you through the whole process. Not like my dogs don't need to buy another house. All right. Two minutes. Stretch your legs. You got to go pee. Keep going. Take two. I know I muted myself and I was still talking. Somebody's got to stop me. <laughs> I had to stop myself. Take two minutes because if I don't bring these two in and they don't stop barking, I'm going to lose my, my mind and my neighbors are going to kill me. So give me two seconds. I figure it just said to pee. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, wet and muddy feet. I forgot it was wet outside. Took me longer. All right, what's the first step if we're going to do a transaction? Doesn't matter if it's a buyer or a seller. What's the first thing we want to do inside of our database? First one that gets it right, it's my key card to get into the office. Add your contacts. Add your client to your contacts. Oh, it. Somebody got it exactly right. All right, absolutely correct. Make sure we add our contacts into our database if they're not already there. I'm sure most of you know how to do it already. We're just going to go and do an add and put in the pertinent information. How do we create the opportunity? Who knows what an opportunity is? How about that? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Donna, is that your parade wave? Are you practicing? <laughs> All right, so your opportunity, your opportunity is the place where we where we manage i wanted to say track but track is right but it's where we manage our transactions okay so opportunities are the handshake applet over here on the left hand side 
there are multiple multiple ways to create a trend to create an opportunity one is directly from your contact so let's go back to let's do i think tucker's got most of them so let's go to dakota so i'm going to open up dakota here she is right if i go over here here's my timeline where i can see the stuff i've done with her Here's my opportunities so I can see how many opportunities I have. So as you see, I have four opportunities with her already. I have, uh, let's see, I got a landlord, I got a listing, and I got a listing, and I got a tenant. Okay. She's a hustler. So I can go into my opportunities, and I can click right here where it says create opportunity. It automatically brings in Dakota because I am in her contact card. Or... I can actually go into opportunities itself. And from my opportunities pipeline, I can go in and say, create an opportunity. And you will see that it's the exact same screen. Exact same screen. The only difference is I have no client in here. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the opportunity type, and we're going to figure out what kind of opportunity we're doing. So since we're talking about buyers tonight, we'll work with a buyer. So I'm going to click on my buyer. Then I have to go find out who I'm doing this with. And since Dakota's already got enough, we'll go back to Tucker. So I'm going to say Tucker is my client. The system will name the opportunity for you. You can add custom tags. The custom tags are more or less like this. Is it a referral? Is it an investor? Things like that. I haven't really gotten into them personally. Um, you're going to put in an estimated close date and a time frame. So let's say Tucker wants to do something in the next three months, which means I'm probably going to settle in the next five to six months. So let's say we're going to settle by the middle of July. Um, he tells me he wants to spend up the $465,000. I may or may not actually have that pre-approval yet. So I'm going to put his budget in there. If I have his budget, obviously I'm going to put in what the pre-approval amount is. Follow me so far. All right. The commission rate. The commission rate is just your portion of the commission. Now on the buy side, that's obvious because we only have one side of the commission, right? On the listing side, you're gonna have this same box, but when we do listings, we're doing the whole thing. So if it's a 6% listing, I'm keeping 3%, I'm giving 3% to the buy side, right? It still only wants my side of this because this is where it starts to calculate your commissions when we get to that point. So industry standard right now is running at about two and a half percent. The opportunity phase, we have multiple stages and phases inside the opportunity. <laughs> be the, um, since nobody wants to play nice, they don't get anything now. Um, being the cultivate stage, which is we just met them and we got to work with them over a period of time. We can also put them in the appointment stage to where we have, we're scheduling the appointment, we've set the appointment, or we have concluded and held the appointment. Um, we can also put them directly into active. So let's say there's somebody you've been talking to for a while, they call you up and they're like, I got my pre-approval, I'm ready to go start looking at houses. You're like, great, I need you to sign a buyer agreement. Um, you can do that right now online, or you'll do it when I meet you at the property type situation, you know? So I'm going to go ahead and put this into the appointment phase because I'm getting ready for my appointment. So, and I'm going to say I've already scheduled the appointment and I'm just going to hit create. And then there's my opportunity. It pops open just like this. Now I'm going to show you a little bit of information and you all are going to have to figure out how your market center has it set up. So when you look at my command, you're going to see some things that you don't have. So for starters, oh, I'm in a buyer part. So good. So you can't see the back secret stuff that I already have. So um, if we know the property address, we're going to enter it in here. And there's a little edit button. So if we already know the property we're going to write on, 
We're just going to go in here and look at it. Zashio. Oops. It's actually a listing that I have under contract right now, but I'll just use that address. So it's going to search for the stuff and it's going to bring everything in and I'm going to hit save. Um, I'm going to give you a little insight on something. The concept behind command is AI and way, way, way down the road. One of the original um, roadmap plans was that you would be able to go into your mobile app when we had another app, which I'm not going to bring up because it's gone. Um, and you were going to be able to tell that app to write an offer for your client, Tucker James, for 123 Main Street. And you would be able to put that information in there and it would write your offer for you. Wouldn't that be amazing if we could do that? It'd just be awesome. However, that's probably A, never going to happen or it's going to be really, really, really far down the road. One of the things that we do when we're running our business, back to running our business, is we need to track our data and track our numbers. I need to know where my leads are coming from, and I need to know my conversion rates. So based on when I get them as a lead, how I convert them into an actual client, and then how fast I get them um, through the, the opportunity phases and get them to closing. The bare minimal in this detail section right here that you should be filling in are your contract date and your close date at the bare minimal, because those two stages are needed. Those two are needed for uh, your commissions. However, I highly suggest you getting in the habit of recording when the appointment was scheduled, what the appointment date was, and when they actually signed your buyer agreement, okay? Because this is gonna help you narrow down even further how fast you're getting people to sign your agreements and stuff like that. All right, you guys with me so far? Questions? All right, I know, Charity's like, just get to the paperwork, please. Does everybody have, is everybody using DocuSign? Because I know some teams might still be using Dot Loop and things like that. Is everybody using DocuSign? Yes. Okay. Is your DocuSign connected to your command account? Yes. 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 Good deal. So we're going to go into the documents tab here. Get in here. Come on. And the very, 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 very first thing you do when you get into documents, the very first thing is you go over here where it says pick your checklist. Now, some of you may not have that. I don't know what all the market centers are doing. They should have it. They should have it. Um, I don't know what all the market centers are doing. I'm gonna go in and pick my checklist. So where is my property? My property is in Frederick County. Now, you see how I have all of these checklists? My Columbia folks, you don't have this, all right? You only have Maryland and then PA or something like that. You have one generic. In our office, we actually broke it down by county. So don't get stuck on this, just figure out what your market center has, okay, for a checklist and how they have it set up. You may not have a checklist and it may be already loaded and you only have the one. Again, I don't know how you, you have it set up in your market centers. So find out what yours looks like. The reason why I'm telling you to make sure you get your checklist first is because it's going to open up your checklist and it's going to tell you what you need. So in order to work with a buyer, here's the buyer consult section over here. Here's my under contract section over here. And then here's my closed and this is gonna be broken down for my documents. Now, if you look at mine, you're gonna see I have these little blue boxes that say DS next to it. How many of you have actually gotten into opportunities and started at opportunities and have gotten this far? Do you have, Donna, since you raised your hand, Ivan, I know the answer to you because you're in my office. Donna, do you have those little DSs on your checklist? We don't have checklists. So, okay, so there's the whole thing. We got to figure out what you're doing in your market center. <laughs> Tia, I think I saw you shake your head. Well, if we're, I do we're, have those. Yeah, okay. we're new. Okay. Yes. Do you know what they're for, Tia? Mm, no. <sighs> All right. If you have these, Fine. that means that you are mapped. What that means is when I click on this button that says start transaction, DocuSign will load those forms in the room for you so you don't have to go search for them. 
All right. So when you got a buyer agreement and you're like, well, what buyer, what, what do I need? All right. All of us should be roughly the same. And again, find out what your rules are in your market center. But I can tell you right now, at the bare minimum, you're going to have a buyer agreement and you're going to have a consent for dual agency. Okay. We actually want our affiliated business disclosure and the consumer notice to buyers done in our buyer agreement. So we have four documents that are required. So when I hit this button that says start transaction and it takes me to DocuSign, it's automatically going to load those documents for me. Okay. So if I don't have one of those, that mean I don't need it. I don't have the affiliated business when it comes up in mind. Like then that might not be a requirement for your office. Okay. Okay. That, remember, my checklist is for me. Your okay. checklist is for you. Find out what the rules are in your office so that you know you're following them correctly. Pretty much, you, at, you should at least have over here in this checklist some optionals and requires, okay? If you don't have that, then you got to talk to somebody to find out what are your minimum required forms for a buyer agreement, for contracts, listing agreements, and so on, okay? Now, when I jump over here and say start transaction, by the way, that's it. Once you do that, you're done. Once I jump over here and say start transaction, it's going to take me into DocuSign and I'm going to have to sign into DocuSign. And it's going to take me right to my room. Now DocuSign has two sides. I got an e-signature side and they have a um, room side. We use room. And as you see, my required forms automatically load it for me. If you do not have the little DS and you are not being mapped, then you have to go get your forms. Now, again, we go to the add button here. We go to DocuSign forms. Yours are going to look different than mine. We all do it a little bit different. So find out how your DocuSign is set up. All right. All of my stuff is broken down in the Frederick office by county and by type of transaction. So I have buyer forms. I have listing forms. I have rental forms. And then I have a sales contract form. Some of you may just have Baltimore, Anne Arundel, Howard, PG, Montgomery, Charles. You just might have it by county or you just might have one state folder and it's got everything in it, okay? Look at your doc. This is the other reason why it's important for you all to practice. Look at your documents and see what you got going on. Um, once you find out what it is you need, you just put check marks on it. And then down here, it will say add and you can add them to the room. All right. So all of my stuff is loaded. Now, what I'm not going to do is go over each and every step of filling out this document. And I'm going to tell you why. Don't shake your head at me. Don't do that. I see you. It's because that's two hours worth of time because you got <laughs> this is two hours of going over this stuff of every section of a buyer agreement because it's very detailed and each of you is going to be told something different okay the state has a minimum requirement of things we need and again each broker has their own rules to go above and beyond whatever the state minimum are so you need to get with your trainers and your market center again whether you have a coach, whether you have a mentor, whether you have a market center trainer, or whether you have a documents assistance group, okay? We have a leverage center in Frederick and Columbia that we can hire to do all of our paperwork if we so wish. Um, so find out what you have available to you in your market centers, all right? And let them help you determine how to best complete your forms based on that. And for those of you that are on a team, one of the documents that's not in here is dual agency on the team because you have to disclose that as well. I see my chat lighting up. Oh, all right, you guys are just chatting. All right, any questions on this? This is how you start your opportunity and you get to your buyer agreement. Charity, if you want me to do it, I will do more. Again, I'm gonna put my info in the chat box. If you wanna reach out to me, I'll sit down and do it with you, all right? It's, it's not that hard. And if you just go through and read these, again, 
read the Donna can read them upside down, apparently. I don't know if you all heard that. So from what I'm hearing, Donna would be a great resource for you all to call on and learn from when it comes to documents. I'm just shooting a wild guess here because she can read it upside down. Would that be wrong, Donna? Would you be willing to help and guide some of our folks in understanding the contracts and the agreements? Absolutely. So Donna, yeah, tell me, too. why do you know it so well? Um, well, I've been licensed for 40 years um, and I'm part of the forms committee for the Maryland Association of Realtors. So um, everybody take down Donna's name, ask Donna to put her number and email in the chat. I'm just letting you know right now, if she's on the forms committee, don't ask me, ask her. <laughs> and she can answer your questions around this. Again, get with your broker, get with your team leader, get with your trainers, get with your mentors, get with your productivity coach, um, get with your market center tech trainer, get with somebody in your market center and find out what the requirements are for your market center. Again, yes, Donna will validate this. We all have a base minimum that the state requires, yet each brokerage will do things a little bit differently. So I do not want to go too deep into actually the forms just because I don't want to show you something and then have you go back to your office and go, well, Matt said. So I'm not afraid of it. I just don't want to do that to you. So questions, comments, concerns? We only go to eight o'clock. Is that correct? Is that what I was told? Okay. I have nothing that I'm doing important other than these dogs in here hounding me. As long as they're not bothering you. If you guys have questions, we can chat longer if you want. I'm okay with it. Um, does anybody feel like there's something they did not get that they were expecting tonight? Let me ask it that way. Because we are coming up on our eight o'clock, our bewitching hour, if you will. I think I got more than expected. <laughs> okay. All right. I items well, for myself. Be I've been playing around linking a few things and playing in the app that you gave us. And um, I sent a link out to a few people for my app as well. So okay. I hadn't sent it before. All right. Anyone else? Anybody didn't get something they were expecting, something they were hoping, besides Charity, who didn't get the forms the way she wanted them. <laughs> Really, I answered all your questions. There's nothing that you missed, nothing that you were expecting. I did that good. I'm not allowed to answer, right? You can answer. You can say whatever you want. The buyer contract, the contract with buyer. That's the only thing I feel like I want more information about. Okay. So let me give you one tidbit of information right now. In this business, terminology is key. The only thing we call yeah. a contract is an actual contract, okay? Yeah. What, what you're asking for right now is the buyer agreement, okay? Yes, and yes. Again, I would be happy to go deeper into the buyer agreement with you, yet it is a long process to go over that line by line and discuss that in every aspect, all right? And we are out of time. And this is more about finding our buyers, working with our buyers and winning our buyers. And one of the best ways to win our buyers, cost for client to sign buyer agreement. There is no cost to sign the buyer agreement. The cost, there is no cost to sign it, right? Our commissions are paid. Sorry, I got sidetracked. So it was in the chat. So yeah. the cost of the the cost to the buyer is only what we charge them. Again, talk to your market center, your coaches, and your trainers to find out what they advise you to do. I can tell you what I do, all right? Commissions are paid by the sellers, so there's no cost to the buyer in that aspect. However, we have the right to charge what is called a flat fee, and that flat fee ranges. There are people that charge anywhere from $3.95 to $8.95. Okay, per transaction. All right. That is in addition to the commission we receive. All right. The commission amount for a buyer is based off what this listing agent or the seller has agreed to pay. So for them to sign it, there's nothing. There's no upfront cost to them at all. 
All right. Um, but again, the documents themselves, line by line, to go over those is long. Longer than the two hours we took for tonight, to be honest with you. So I, I, have, a I have a question. Good. When you were doing the uh, buyer's the example of the buyer's agreement and you went to the commission part, did you say something about like market or something when you put that down? At first you had said 3% and then you went 2.5%. Did you say something about market or something? So the market standard right now that we're seeing, I shouldn't say standard, but the, the average that we're seeing that's being paid to buyer agents is 2.5%. That's what I was saying. We should be striving on listings to charge 6% on our listings, okay? So that we're actually paying out 3% to buyer agents. Would you rather have 2.5% or 3%? 3%. I mean, I've, I've seen, just looking through there, I've seen I've seen some 3% too, just looking at some of the listings. There are, and couple, I've seen. there are a couple, and be honest with you, that's one of the pluses with short sales and foreclosures because the banks will pay the full 3% in most situations even though the transaction is a nightmare. And I think that's why they're willing to pay it because they know what kind of craziness we go through. Donna, what you got? I was just going to say, be careful. We're not all in the same franchise. Correct. That's why there's certain things that you want to know about. I can tell you what I do, yet you still need to go back to your offices or your teams and find out what their rules are on that. And again, that's why going over the buyer agreement in great detail is a challenge because it can vary based on what office you're in and what team you're on, such as the admin fees and things like that. So, and what that looks like. Because Thank they're you. all different brokers. And so correct. they have different policies. That is correct. Let me put my stuff in the chat so you all can like grab it real quick since I did say I was going to do that. So any other questions you guys have? Okay. Just speak up. Unless the phone is ringing. The phone is ringing. Okay. Good, Natasha, what you got? I can't hear you. Some benefits on working with the team. Uh, benefits of working with a team, um, leads, um, transaction coordination, um, mentorship, mentorship. Um, there's all kinds of different benefits to it, to be honest with you. Now, I would tell you some of you are already on a team and that's cool. I don't judge teams at all in any way, shape or form. However, I am a fan of, as a new agent, you should be doing as much as you can on your own for as long as you can, because you need to learn the business and you need to learn how to do the business. What happens when you join a team is you get people doing things for you, such as doing your contracts, your buyer agreements, scheduling your photos and the whole nine yards that you never actually get to learn those things. So when and if or ever you decide to go out on your own, then you, I've seen agents kind of have to go into a start over mode because they've never done their own work before. So learning what you have to do and it's gonna help you pick a team that you're gonna be more successful on. Because if you know what the business looks like and all the things that are there, when you're interviewing for teams and you see what they're offering as services, you're gonna be able to go, I like the way you do business better because it fits with my mindset. So it's gonna be a better fit for you. That's the way I look at it. There are huge benefits to teams and you still need to learn the business because the, the team is still going to hold you accountable to do what you need to do to bring in the business as well. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? This puppy should have lost her voice by now as much as she has been outside barking her head off. She literally just wanted to come inside and then she just went back out again. Goodness gracious. Um, all right, grab my info out of the chat box. I'm not gonna sign off just yet because I wanna make sure you guys get all that content. Um, so if you haven't gotten it yet, make sure you get it. If you need anything, feel free to reach out. Um, I'm available fairly often. 
fairly often. I do, <laughs> I do have a pretty full calendar, but I do make um, time, so. Thanks, Matt. Dave, for all this, you've been the best by far with your information. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Martin. This, this was great. I, a lot of really, really good information. Um, I've just come back to KW after a few years, and we didn't have any of this yet. Kelly was just being introduced when I left. Yeah, that's, so, the, that's the name I didn't bring up earlier because there was no re bringing her right, up. Right, no. But this is, <laughs> this is amazing because so many new and different tools that we have that no other brokers have, and you're doing a great job. I appreciate all well, that you, you, you shared with us. Thank you. So I'm the agent services coordinator at Annapolis. Um, I was actually told that we are not ready to get rid of the Kelly app yet because command does not have the ability to send you push notifications yet. Absolutely incorrect. Okay. Gone. If you got Kelly, get rid of it. Push notifications come through for everything. Great. Thank you for the update on that. Absolutely. And just so you guys know, a lot of you don't, if, first off, if you don't have the command mobile app, make sure you get it. Um, if you do have it and you've been using it, the next update is opportunities and you will be able to manage your opportunities in the mobile app. We're, we're, we're testing it right now. So be on the lookout for that. What does that one look like? It's just called Calibrated Command. Yep, just look up KW Command. It's going to be the red square with the white letters. The consumer app is the white square with the red letters. In order to sign into Command Mobile, you're going to use the same credentials that you sign in with everything. That KW username and password. So again, those of you that don't have apps right now, um, put your uh, email in the, um, the chat right now. I have a pre-made template for emails. That tells you all the apps you should get. It will have all the all your all your home snap showing time and all that stuff like that. There's only like six or so that you really really need to run your business. So if you need it, drop your email in there right now. And let me know, and I will put it out to you guys. All right. Well, it's after eight o'clock. I want to protect your time. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I wasn't expecting that. I caught me. I caught you out of the corner of my eye. Over here. <laughs> uh, Matt, one thing I noticed that when we were in command, you had a whole bunch of different forms. I know you said that our lists could be different, but you had like Virginia forms and different ones. Even though our lists are different, do we have access to get them or maybe not? Again. Find out what you have. Okay. I'm in a location where we have agents and we have a broker for PA, Virginia, okay. West Virginia, and Maryland. So the okay. access that we need to forms is different than yours, right? Okay. So if you are, say, Northeast Maryland, you might have PA in Delaware, right? If you're down in the South, you might have um, PG and, um, I mean, um, Maryland, DC, and Virginia type situation, right? So it depends on what you're bordering and what your um, what how many brokers you have or what how many licenses your broker holds, basically is what it comes down to. So you got to find out what your licensing status is for your brokers in the brokerage. So what states you can get additional licenses in. Nice. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? We just want to stand around and listen to my dog bark. Oh my God, she's killing me right now. Tia, one more thing, just um, make sure that you are not using forms for a region or state that you are not yet licensed in yourself, unless you talk to your broker about it first. <laughs> and that's really, that, that's very good advice. And it's typically not an issue because it's not like you're going to go pull a, um, a Virginia addendum and throw it into a Maryland contract. I will tell you, for those of you that are Frederick, south because i don't know how many of you are up north um before i say this is there anybody in here from montgomery county no montgomery county people okay well if you're dealing with montgomery county 
you will be challenged with forms because Montgomery County, I'm sorry, the, the, the state of Montgomery County has their own forms and Montgomery County agents do not like to see our MAR forms um, and they get very upset. So if you're not using their GCAR forms, they kind of have this panic attack. Yes, it, it really does it. Does. They, what do you say? As Baltimore County does? No, no, no. Baltimore County is fine. It's, it's only Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. Only Montgomery County. And the GCAR forms, if you get a contract from someone down that way, and it can be Prince George's or Montgomery, um, a lot of times they will write an offer on your Baltimore, Carroll, Anne Arundel, Howard County properties on their GCAR forms. And you have to read those very close because they're very different. They have from different nuances down there. Yes, um, I was one, gonna... one quick example is transfer tax and docu documentary stamps. Up here, they're standardly split, which is the law, unless you say something extra different in the contract. And the GCAR contract says that the um, buyer will pay all. Yes. So you have to be very careful if someone brings you a GCAR form when you're when you're um presenting when you're not in GCAR area right? right so that's what yes so you, if you are going to ever do any business in it's more montgomery county the pg county people aren't as bad aren't, but aren't as much GCAR right forms in pg county if you ever do business in montgomery county and you turn in a contract and it is not on their gcar contract they do tend to throw a bit of a, of a fit um and yes the gcar contract is different like your inspection time frames when the inspection time frame starts all of that stuff. So that's an additional contract you need to know. Um, unfortunately, they don't have the same respect for us and they'll bring me a G-car contract in Frederick County and I, they don't like it if I say no. Of course, I don't care, you can bring me whatever you want, but they definitely don't like it when we bring our forms to them. I just, I don't know why, but it's just the way it is, so.